I am outside Whole Foods Market and I am going to show you guys what I would purchase on a nutrient dense ketogenic or carnivore diet. Keep in mind, the majority of the food that I purchase is from local farms uh, for both myself and my family. But I understand that not everyone has access to local farms and hey, maybe something isn't at the farmer's market that week. Uh, so you want to stop by Whole Foods and pick something up. Uh, I also get various things from spices to seasonings uh, to certain raw cheeses at Whole Foods. So this will be ketogenic and carnivore focused. Let's get started. Usually use a basket, but I want to keep my hands free today. You know, the produce in general at Whole Foods is, is pretty good. You know, they pick out what looks good. Uh, a lot of the stuff is stuff you will see in, you know, your regular local supermarket. Uh, but like, you'll never see, you know, organic black pigs there. And you know, that's not a bad price. Uh, these are fresh. I'll actually pick some of these up for my family. So a lot of Whole Foods now do have like juice bars and stuff, but you don't really control the quality of the produce that goes into that. Uh, sometimes I do buy vegetables here for like a beef stock or something, just like mirepoix, carrot, onion, celery, usually organic stuff. There's a lot of fairly natural like heirloom grains, nuts and seeds uh, that you can get here. And they even have, you know, the nuts you can grind sometimes. So, you know, if you are on keto and a little more lenient, you know, you would definitely want to check out this section. Uh, I usually get some coffee that I grind for my uh, dad. One plant food I will talk about is sweet potatoes. I really like the sweet potatoes they have here. And they have a variety of them, like four or five different ones. But the seafood can be pretty expensive, but the frozen stuff is usually pretty good price and also decent quality. You know, a lot of wild caught stuff that's affordable. Uh, the smoked stuff uh, is always really tasty and amazing. Uh, you know, they have like wild smoked salmon. Sometimes they have caviar here. Uh, so if you're traveling or just want to spend a little more money, I uh, really like this stuff. Uh, you want to usually check the ingredients on the wild salmon to see, you know, what's added, if there's preservatives or nitrates or if it's just a salt and sugar cure. Uh, you know, the caviar isn't a bad price. You know, this is uh, $14.99 for two ounces. You know, I mean, just a small package like this is $9. So, you know, even buying fresh fish is uh, much cheaper than that. I used to go to like local Asian markets or fish markets to get my seafood. Uh, but the pricing on a lot of this stuff is actually really good. Uh, they have wild caught coho salmon fillets, which I think are much better than sockeye at a very affordable price. Uh, just a bunch of decent wild caught fish. Again, sometimes you know it can be a bit pricey. Uh, like $18.99 to flounder is a little crazy. You know, $7.99 tilapia. Everything's a little high. The local Asian market near me usually offers similar product for a few dollars less per pound. And again, the wild caught seafood, especially you know stuff like this, you know, like frozen mussels are great, and only $6.49. So very affordable, very high quality nutrition. Uh, I would say frozen seafood is one of the most underrated, uh, especially the shellfish, one of the most underrated foods you can get. You guys know I buy my meat from a local farm, but Whole Foods actually has pretty decent quality grass-fed stuff, and even the non-grass-fed stuff is pretty nice. Like, this grain-fed short rib looks good. Uh, they grind the beef fresh every day, so it tastes really good. Yes, sir. Do you guys have the grass-fed ground beef today? Yeah. Oh, uh, that's, that's the grass-fed stuff? Okay. Yeah, can I get a pound of that? So I'll pick up a pound of that, uh, maybe make my family some burgers later. You know, the pork here's not bad, but again, it's conventionally raised, you know, usually corn or soy feed. Uh, so I would definitely stick to the beef. And you know, $7.99 for pork belly might seem kind of cheap, uh, but you know, you can get this stuff for, for much less, maybe the same price, even at a local farm. I uh, don't know, man, that's it, thank you so much. I like the idea of the sausages and the pre-made burgers that have a small amount of plant foods. Uh, but what you really want to look for is if they're made from beef and they usually use pork in these. You want to keep your omega fatty acid ratios balanced. Uh, unfortunately, conventional pork and chicken is not conducive to that. Bacon is one thing I do buy a lot here. And I usually look for the beef bacon. Again, the reason for beef bacon is omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. And although I don't see that here, uh, they usually do have it. You definitely want to check out the freezer section too. Uh, if you want to get like some marrow bones or some beef liver, uh, maybe even chicken livers here. They sell a bunch of stuff like frozen marrow, frozen oxtails, frozen liver, uh, all grass-fed, really high-quality stuff. 
uh, the organic grass-fed stuff from, I believe it's from Australia that they sell, the marrow bones are actually really high quality and really good. Uh, we actually wanted to offer these on Frankie's Free Range Meat, but we couldn't uh, secure the supplier. I mean, yeah, th this salmon is great. $9.99 a pound, looks amazing. Uh, too bad my family doesn't like salmon. Chicken, of course, we want to avoid it because of the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. And they have a bunch of marinated meats, you know, which might not be too bad if you're pretty lenient with your diet, but you know, the quality of the spices and the seasonings might not be that great. Hamburger buns, I wish. Beyond Burger, no thanks. They actually sell this ground now. Oh, it's frozen. Heat protein isolate and canola oil, my favorite. They do have some bison here, and it's actually really well priced. Very lean though. Not something I would usually go for because of the fat content. So ground bison, $10. Uh, sirloin, $15.99. You know, not super cheap, but not too bad. Uh, 24 pound, yeah. I mean, you could get, you know, grass-fed steaks, you know, less than $14, $15 a pound if you look, so. Maybe a treat if you want to try bison. Some ground beef over here too, but you know, I'll definitely opt for the, the stuff they grind fresh. Organic chicken, you know, I'm not gonna kill you once in a while, but I'd rather avoid it if you can. The butter is my favorite part of Whole Foods because they usually do carry some decent quality butters and a variety of brands. Uh, at this location, compared to the other one that I go to sometimes, they actually don't have as many brands of butter here. Uh, there's a French butter that I, I really like that I don't see. You know, but a lot of the imported stuff is what I prefer. Like this Icelandic butter is usually pretty good. I try to go for salted. Uh, it helps keep it better. You know, it's being shipped across the world. So, you know, when buying butter, at least from a supermarket, if it's not raw from a local farm, I do go for the salted stuff. This is a decent brand that I've had in the past. Yeah, you know, I'm not a fan of these and you know, I'd rather make my own ghee or clarified butter if I had to. So sometimes they do have wild boar sausage, which I really like. And they also have beef only hot dogs. So again, you know, th those beef only hot dogs, pretty cheap, pretty affordable, definitely an option. Uh, although the ingredients aren't usually the best, even though they're organic. I'm generally not a fan of dairy unless it's raw, but I will get the butter because you know, the butter is a pretty decent quality and I usually just cook with it. Like all of this other dairy stuff, yogurt, milk, kefir, whatever it is, I prefer to get it raw locally. You know, even like the, the vitamin D milk, the organic grass-fed Horizon Valley stuff, I get much better stuff locally. Eggs are definitely the most nutrient-dense food that most people have access to. The problem is that any egg you buy in a supermarket will be fed corn and soy. And that being said, they are still an excellent source of nutrients, vitamins, minerals, elements, and fatty acids. Uh, you could try a bunch of brands. You know, Vital Farms is pretty decent. Uh, I haven't tried those. Uh, but what I usually look for is like the Vital Farms pasture raised eggs, or I go for omega-3 fortified eggs. Uh, so if I didn't buy eggs from a local farm, I would probably buy the omega-3. As with many supermarkets, there are a lot of packaged cheese options. But what we want is a raw cheese made from a high quality milk. You know, sometimes these packaged cheeses uh, are made from raw milk and are pretty decent quality, but a lot of them aren't. Like Parmigiano Reggiano is always good, but Whole Foods does have their own cheese section. So, you know, I, I would kind of stay away from this stuff and, and go for the, you know, the fresh, the higher quality cheese that they cut from the wheels every day. Ooh, fresh pasta. I should get my parents something. They don't need it. I kinda wanna buy ravioli. So most of these cheeses will not be raw, but a lot of them will. Uh, this eight month Manchego is actually what I've been buying recently because it's very affordable. Uh, this is $18.99 a pound. And the other day it was on sale for like $15.99 a pound. And it's made from sheet milk, which is generally very high quality, very nutrient dense. So I am going to get this cheese for sure, unless I see something that is way cheaper and made from raw dairy. Uh, so let me grab a, a lot of these because this is what my sister eats all the time. And I can probably eat this too. I'm, I'm able to tolerate sheep dairy to some degree. 
yeah, these are the ingredients you want to see. Sheep's milk, rennet, salt, lysosome and enzymes contains milk. Lysosome can be inflammatory for some people's gut lining. And ideally it's made from animal rennet. Uh, since this was made in the United States, it's probably vegetable rennet. Uh, so not the best quality cheese, but just about as good as you can get. So here's an organic six month manchego. Way more per pound. Similar ingredients, but they add calcium to it. I mean, any imported cheese is probably gonna be decent quality. You know, this Taleggio is, you know, all, everything's pasteurized milk, unfortunately. Now, pasteurized milk. Oh, this is raw cow's milk. $19.99 a pound. Fontana Valle di Osta from Italy. So this is a really good cheese that I would get too. Basically what you want is a European cheese made with raw milk. That's it. This is better than the other cheese that I have, but it's a bit more expensive and it contains cow's milk. I'd rather opt for the sheep milk in this case. Yeah, so I would say a decent amount of these are actually raw. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of them are not. I'll pick up one of these and see if uh, my sister likes it more. All right, here we have an Emmentaler. Uh, this is $14.99 a pound, raw cow's milk. Uh, looks pretty good. Uh, maybe I'll try this one too. I'll just grab it for my sister. Uh, France. Whole pasteurized sheep's milk. So, I mean, this would be an example of a cheese like if you didn't have access to other raw cheeses. A French pasteurized cheese made from sheep milk would be about as good as you can get. Uh, Italy Gorgonzola DOP. This is not pasteurized to my recollection yet. Unfortunately, Gorgonzola, even the designation of protection, pasteurizes their cheese. It's a sin. But there is a raw cow's milk blue cheese. And my sister really likes blue cheese, so... Does she? I don't know. I actually don't know. But that's another great option. Any, anyway, I think you guys get the drift. Cheese is very nutrient dense. It has all the vitamins. So, you know, just with cheese and eggs, uh, you're really getting more nutrients than anyone else is getting in their diet. And the vitamin content of the cheese depends directly on the pasture quality. You know, so when you're buying like an Italian DOP cheese, you know, such as the Gorgonzola, like the Parmigiano Reggiano, it needs to be made from cows that were on summer grasses. You know, that's why we pay more for certain cheeses. And look at that beautiful design on the rind of the, the Swiss cheese. Uh, that looks like Let's Vaz, it's a Gruyere. Very high quality raw milk cheese. Uh, probably one of the best cheeses you can buy from a nutrient density standpoint. Yeah. I would say, you know, this Let's Vaz, raw cow's milk Gruyere, might be the most nutrient dense cheese here if I had to place it back because this is always made from alpine cows on summer pasture. This is what we sell on Frankie's Free Range Meat. Might as well get that too. Put some of, uh, I'll put some of the Manchego back. All right, that's enough of cheese for me. Uh, oh, the Parmigiano Reggiano. I really like the wheels here. Uh, this is another great cheese. Uh, great to grate onto meat, onto food. Usually a pretty affordable price. Uh, we have this on Frankie's Free Range Meat as well. Uh, this plastic though, you know, if the cheese sits in cellophane, it kind of ruins the taste and doesn't taste good. Uh, that's why we vacuum seal it. I mean, if you're keto, you can indulge in this kind of stuff, but most of this isn't like organic, super high quality. You know, go, go to your local farmer's market, go to a local farm, get the really high quality produce and make it yourself. They do have sushi. I mean, a, a sashimi box probably wouldn't be that bad, but I don't see sashimi, I just see sushi. You know, sometimes you go to like a local Asian market and they have like sashimi packages where you can uh, just buy the raw fish, which is cut already. A bunch of, you know, prepared foods over here. Haven't had a sandwich myself in 15 years. Uh, they got chicken, lime chicken. So, you know, I guess if you're on the go, the salad bar stuff is great. Uh, there is some water over here, but we'll go over to the water aisle to talk about that. 
Here are the cold cuts. Uh, these suffer the same issue that the sausages suffer, that they are mostly made from pork and they don't have a good omega-6 ratio. Uh, prosciutto di San Daniele and prosciutto di Parma are decent. Uh, San Daniele is a little better. I would actually buy and eat this stuff myself. The other stuff, not so much. Uh, La Quercia actually has a really nice tasting product. Uh, Yamon Serrano, Spanish ham. Uh, if this was actually from Spain, uh, I would say buy it. But it doesn't look like this was made in Spain. Uh, so if you can get any legitimate, you know, Spanish or Italian ham, uh, those are your best bets here. But like a lot of this stuff, this might be decent, like mortadella with no nitrites added, but it still has a bad omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. And they have a pretty nice like pastry and bread selection here. I just want to see if they have any sourdough breads or any artisanal stuff. I'm pretty sure they don't. Like a lot of these breads might be naturally fermented and made very properly. Uh, you know, even if they have like a from scratch sourdough, like this stuff would be great and it's better than most of the stuff you're gonna eat. Uh, I would go for something like this, a rye bread, uh, but I would ask them if it's like 100% rye, uh, organic sprouted old world. So that, that bread might actually be made from like an heirloom grain and be pretty good. Uh, if you are interested in eating bread and you do eat bread, I would ask them, you know, what type of wheat is that made from? Is it an heirloom grain? Uh, you know, if this is 100% rye, uh, that's the type of bread I would go for and you'd feel good on. Sometimes they also have like a refrigerated bread section or they have high quality naturally fermented sourdough loaves. Let's see if we can find that. I make my own ice cream from raw milk, so I don't worry about that type of stuff. There might be some like keto cauliflower crust or pizza alternative somewhere, uh, but I never buy that stuff. Ah, so here's the bread I was talking about. Uh, so some of these breads might be really good, uh, some of them might not be. Usually these breads are prohibitively expensive and they're either frozen or refrigerated. So like a sa- yeah, this is frozen. So like this sourdough spelt bread or, or this Ezekiel bread, uh, not the Ezekiel bread so much, but like a sprouted sourdough bread made from one heirloom grain would be pretty decent, but it's frozen bread. What's the point of buying frozen bread? Love artichokes. I should probably buy a bag of those. I haven't made artichokes in a while. $10 is like a, a reasonable price for this many artichokes. Uh, I used to buy a lot of these other vegetables when I was bodybuilding and believed in, uh, in veggies. But I, I do get a lot of rice cauliflower for my family. I get like six bags at a time. But you, I mean, you could get like pre-cut mushrooms if you want. Uh, mushrooms tend to be overpriced. I, I like buying them from restaurant purveyors. Uh, some more artichoke carts up there. This brand has pretty good stuff. Uh, Stylebush. Mo most of their stuff is pretty high quality. You know, so if you want some easy stuff that's pre-cut and clean. Ah, uh, so here's the fruit. And frozen fruit from Whole Foods is really decent quality from a taste perspective. Uh, so those blueberries right there, these organic blueberries, I absolutely love these. These are the best tasting blueberries I've ever had from anywhere. So the organic big blueberries from Whole Foods, don't get the wild ones. Uh, you know, sometimes they have you know wild blueberries here. Don't get these. They're not nearly as sweet as these. And if I'm gonna be consuming carbohydrates, I'd rather have the really good tasting blueberries. Uh, I haven't tried these other berries. Uh, the strawberries are okay, they're not that sweet, I think. Uh, peaches, pineapple, you know, give these a shot. Uh, I really like pineapple and I really like blueberries. So I would go for these two first. Uh, they're probably guaranteed to be sweet. Uh, the dark sweet cherries are actually really good for my recollection too. Uh, but everything else, you know, the raspberries, the blackberries, the strawberries, uh, a lot of this fruit isn't really that sweet, so keep that in mind. Uh, try a bunch of different brands and see which ones you like the most. Now berries are pretty low in sugar and you can consume them daily without uh, too many issues. So the drink aisle has way too much stuff we could explore uh, if we wanted to look at everything. But all we're gonna talk about today is water. Now you guys see me drink a lot of Pellegrino and Pellegrino is decent quality stuff. Uh, Gerol Steiner is great too. It's a very popular mineral water. 
Uh, the only reason I don't like Gerolsteiner is because the calcium content is so high uh, compared to Pellegrino and a lot of these other waters. I never really liked the taste of Perrier. Uh, if I come here and I'm on like a budget or want to be more mindful, uh, I'll go with the Italian sparkling mineral water because this stuff is $1.39. Same with the Italian still. This is $1.39 for 34 ounces and this stuff is like $2.20 for eight ounces less. So this stuff is like half the price of this stuff. Uh, and the Pellegrino is much cheaper too. Uh, you know, Topo Chico, Gerald Steiner, uh, Mountain Valley sparkling water. This is actually really good. I like this stuff. But this stuff, you know, Saratoga is way more expensive than Pellegrino or the Italian. And I'm Italian, so I'd rather drink Italian water. Uh, the Essentia stuff, this might be good. I think they actually add minerals to this, and I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, they add minerals to this. The problem is the chelations and the forms of minerals aren't exactly natural, what naturally occurs. What is this, flow? So it's just natural spring water. So this might be decent. No, you just want water from a clean source. That's all you really want. You know, if it's carbonated and you like the bubbles, that's great. Uh, Mountain Valley is good. Uh, Starkey spring water, uh, this is new. Uh, they actually changed their bottles. They used to sell bigger bottles or maybe Whole Foods only carries the small bottles now. Oh, these are the plastic ones. Uh, th this is what I was buying the other day. This is the most expensive water here though. Uh, this is 340 for 34 ounces. I tried this the other day. It's really good, I like it, uh, but it's way too expensive. Way too expensive, not worth it. Uh, a bunch of other plastic bottled waters, we don't want that. Uh, I like parchment paper for cooking. Uh, if you guys have never used, if you guys have never used parchment paper, it's it's so useful for non-stick stuff. I was actually trying to find these unbleached paper towels in bulk, but they seemed really expensive. So that's the water. If you guys don't have a water filter or you're trying to buy water on the go, it's a decent option. They do sell this water by the case at a discount though. So if you're buying a large amount of water, they tend to have cases at the front of the store where they sell them. I think it's a 10% case discount. Oh, they got some dog food here. Ironically, this dog food is probably healthier than most of the foods that Whole Foods sells, <laughs> at least to humans, because of our lack of animal foods. So we got a bunch of jerkies here. The main issue with jerky is it's usually almost all sugar. Yeah, even Epic has four grams of sugar in their jerky. Uh, and this is what makes jerky affordable. So, this one's a little better, but very expensive. You know, $9 for two ounces of jerky. You know, we have jerky on Frankie's Free Range Meat. Uh, that's a better price point, and the only ingredients are meat. You know, so be mindful of the sugar content when you're looking at jerky. Uh, maybe this brand is better. It's $5 for three ounces. But there is a carbohydrate content to this. That is a decent price though. So if I was on the go and I wanted something cheap, I would go for that. But Frankie Boy spends too much money on food so he wouldn't buy them anyway. I know the kale chips might be a little tasty. I would go for like seaweed snacks or something. Uh, yeah, they have seaweed snacks here. Uh, these are much cheaper at an Asian market though. Don't buy these here. Go to an Asian market to get these seaweed snacks. Uh, you get like 30 of them for 10 bucks. Same thing. Uh, we got some grains here. Uh, some of these might be fairly high quality. Like wild rice is decent. We did a video on wild rice a couple of weeks ago. You know, sushi rice. Some of this stuff is pretty acceptable in a diet. Uh, I like making my own broths. You know, but some of this stuff is nice for seasoning and adding flavor once in a while. Depends on how strict you want to be with your food quality. But there's a lot to choose from. Okay, so they do have some pork rinds here. Epic sells pork rinds. Again, high omega-6, uh, but if you want a snack, something on the go, I'd probably break out with acne if I ate them. Crackers. You know, speaking of crackers, sometimes they sell like Parmesan crackers, uh, but they're usually really expensive. But those are great if you're on keto. It's literally just Parmesan cheese that's crisped up. You can make them yourself too. Pasta. If you do eat pasta in moderate amounts. Uh, you want like a durum wheat pasta. Whole wheat spaghetti, ingredients, organic durum wheat flour. That's what you want to see. Dur organic durum wheat flour. This would be good. This is acceptable. 
Uh, germ wheat, also known as semolina, it is a decent quality wheat. Obviously, it's better if you can buy some like heirloom. This stuff might be really nice too. Uh, so if you do consume pasta, organic germ wheat, probably the least inflammatory available in a supermarket. So, as you guys know, I do consume seaweed from time to time. It's a great source of electrolytes. Uh, Maine Coast Sea Vegetables is my favorite brand. You know, this stuff isn't too expensive and you don't eat that much of it. Uh, this is also great for like broths and soups and seasoning. Uh, same with a lot of these other like dried Asian ingredients. I prefer to get this type of stuff usually at an Asian market, but the seaweed I do get here. Th this seaweed is more of like a nutritional supplement seaweed, whereas like the Asian style stuff, this is more for cooking because uh, like this is toasted. Uh, they usually do heat this stuff. Uh, canned coconut, not a fan. If you do want to consume coconut, I would try to get a raw product. I mean, if you're making a dessert once in a while, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, so we have a bunch of sauces and seasonings over here, and you know, you could go through the ingredients on each one. Right now in my house, I actually have these two things. I have Red Boat fish sauce, and I have coconut aminos. Both of these are natural, both of them are delicious seasonings. Uh, this is akin to garum, uh, which is an ancient Roman seasoning. It's literally just rotten anchovies. Super umami, super flavorful, used in a lot of Southeast Asian dishes. And these are coconut aminos. Uh, just organic coconut trees have Asian blended with sun-dried mineral-rich sea salt. This is similar to soy sauce. It doesn't have as much of the umami flavor, like that savoriness that, that a fish sauce would have, or like a soy sauce would have. But if you combine this and this, it would be better than soy sauce, and it's not inflammatory. So definitely try out the coconut aminos. You know, it's sweet, it's salty, it's great for dipping sushi, it's great for raw meat. I absolutely love coconut aminos for marinades, and that, the company also sells like garlic sauce and, and other, you know, brandings of their coconut and aminos if you want to try that stuff too. Uh, I don't really indulge in a lot of this other stuff. I mean, I used to be a cook, so I'm familiar with the ingredients, but I don't eat them myself. So for marinara sauce and tomato sauce, what I like doing is just buying a really high quality glass jarred tomato. Like these strained tomatoes, 100% organic. I put this stuff on a pizza I made. It was delicious, you know. And this is just organic strained tomatoes in glass. You know, it doesn't have the flavor of the can. It doesn't taste tinny. This stuff's amazing. Uh, San Marzano diced tomatoes. This stuff's probably good too. You know, try anything in a glass jar. In my opinion, uh, that's just tomatoes. I mean, glass jarred San Marzano tomatoes would probably be the best tasting thing. Uh, the, the YouTube channel Bon Appetit actually did a video where they found the best tasting tomatoes was like a canned brand from uh, California or something, but I go for the glass stuff. Tasted really good when I used it. Bunch more grains, beans and stuff. Cover that another time. Not for us. Uh, pickles, olives. I don't really indulge in this stuff, but I wouldn't see it as too much of an issue for most people. and. You know, I don't know what bacterial strains are usually used in this type of brine or product, but maybe there's some potential gut microbiome benefit. Uh, some hot sauces over there. I'm not really against hot sauce too much, uh, but they, it can cause issues for some people. And barbecue sauce is definitely high in sugar. Uh, canned fish, I'm a huge fan. Uh, Whole Foods might actually be a reasonably affordable place for canned fish. But if you find a brand you like, you can generally buy it in higher volumes directly from the seller. Uh, Ortiz has some luxury products, uh, like these luxury anchovy products in, in glass are pretty good. Sometimes they get very expensive too. Ortiz sells a very high quality tuna belly in olive oil. It's literally $17 a can. This stuff is delicious, so if you want to treat once in a while, that's good. Uh, oyster shellfish, again, I think shellfish is the most underrated high nutrient food in any market. Uh, as long as it's not in cottonseed oil, you're good to go. So olive oil is great. You know, I mean, these are cottonseed oil. That's what you don't want. Smoked baby clams, whole baby clams, all of this stuff. Uh, I would eat this all day. You know, these, this is probably what I would go for. Olive oil tastes a lot better. Uh, some more anchovies. You know, olive oil isn't the end of the world. It throws off your omega-6 a little bit, but I want something that tastes good, you know, that's in glass, that's high quality, that I enjoy eating. Wild Plant's a pretty good brand, but in our past supermarket video, I went much more in depth on fish, so uh, we're not going to do that too much today. 
Uh, I do buy mustard from time to time. Uh, usually I go for the French mustards. The only ingredients you really want to see are mustard seed, vinegar, and salt. I don't actually see the brand of mustard that I usually buy here. Uh, the other Whole Foods carry more. Oh, what am I saying? That's the mustard that I used to buy. So, so this is the brand that I like. Moutard, uh, it's a French mustard. Mustard seeds, vinegar, water, sea salt. So that's all that's in this. Uh, this is the grainy stuff, which I like too, just as much as the smooth stuff. Uh, but you know, if you want to reduce your sodium intake and have something really tasty on your food, mustard is great. Really nice stuff. I'll actually, uh, I'll get one of these. I probably need to do a whole video on oil. Uh, coconut oil is okay. Ghee, butter is okay. A lot of these seed oils, almond oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, very high in omega-6, not what you want, cause inflammation. Pistachio oil, a lot of these nut oils, sometimes they have like almond oil, a lot of different stuff. It's high omega-6, having it in low amounts isn't going to kill you. And honestly, I think, you know, the flavor of pistachio oil on certain dishes can be really nice. Same with sesame oil, you know, same with peanut oil. The flavors really complement themselves to certain dishes, but it's not something I would consume in large amounts every single day, you know, not really exceeding a tablespoon. Uh, they have more ghee over here. Again, you can make your own. Have a video on that. Olive oil, very difficult to really choose which ones. Uh, you could look online, but a lot of the times you get what you pay for. I try to go for a darker colored bottle because olive oil is sensitive to light and it does oxidize fast. Like this stuff looks good because it has the dissolved sediments in the bottom. Yeah, but some of these olive oils, you know, very high price points, you know, 40, 50, 60 dollars. The store brands are usually good enough to get by. You now we have Mediterranean blend, we have Italy, Portugal, Greece. I wouldn't go for Italy as, you know, it's like a high demand product and they go through a lot of it. Uh, I would try Portugal, Spain. Spain's usually really good. Maybe Greece. I haven't tried Greek olive oil, but I would definitely go for some Spanish stuff if I was going to eat it. Uh, California Olive Ranch is a decent brand as well. Napa Valley Naturals, these guys are good too. Uh, I've had their olive oil before. They sell a Spanish olive oil and a California olive oil. So if you like olive oil, you know, try a bunch of different brands, see which taste you like. There's plenty of quality to choose from. Uh, vinegar is a great flavoring agent. Uh, this is actually uh, an aged balsamic vinegar. It's very sweet, has a pretty high sugar content, and this is really delicious on meat. So uh, balsamic vinegar of Modena has different grades. Uh, you have very expensive ones that are like 30, and they go up to like 100, 200 dollars per bottle. A very famous uh, type of aged vinegar. Uh, I don't see that here. Uh, you can find that stuff online. But the DOP is called Aged Balsamic Vinegar di Modena. Uh, Massimo Bottura is a famous Italian chef, and he developed this affordable aged balsamic that kind of replicates uh, the 20, 25 year aged ones that are, are less affordable. By far my favorite steak topping. It's sweet, it's acidic, uh, it's really tasty, really amazing. You know, you can drizzle this on mozzarella, uh, cheese, tomatoes, it's really good stuff. $40, definitely not a budget thing. Uh, and this stuff is not the same. You know, buying this stuff for $4, you can boil this down and try to make it taste like this, but it's not going to. Obviously, uh, here we have the balsamic of Modena DOP. Uh, here's, here's a more aged one, $35 for, for this. And that's not actually that expensive for Modena balsamic. Um, oh, uh, Napa Valley Naturals, I've had their aged balsamic, and it's really good. I don't see their aged balsamic here, but I hear they have an organic red wine vinegar and an organic sherry vinegar. This is really good. Uh, I'm a little disappointed they don't have their uh, Napa Valley Naturals balsamic though. Oh, they do. Okay. So this is the Napa Valley Naturals balsamic. Uh, they have an organic balsamic vinegar and they have a Grand Reserve vinegar. Uh, I think this one tastes a lot better, uh, but this one's organic. Uh, this stuff was actually, to my recollection, 
uh, comparable to that, it was pretty good. You know, putting this stuff on my steak uh, was was really good. I, I really enjoyed this stuff. And, and this is much more affordable, you know, $10, $15 price point as opposed to $40. So if you want something new on your steak, try it out. Uh, they sell glazes, but you really want the legitimate stuff for the Hage Balsamic. Apple cider vinegar, did a video on it. You guys can check it out. What's in here? Nut milks. Vegans are salivating right now. Look at all this nut milk. So what is actually in hemp milk? I've never actually looked. Water, hemp seed, and a bunch of chemicals. This stuff is disgusting, man. It's absolutely putrid. Rice milk. Why don't vegans drink rice milk? Why don't they, why don't they use rice milk? Coconut milk, not the worst thing. So this looks like a bunch of bars that we don't want. I mean, someone asked me about Epic bars the other day. Uh, there's a lot of different bars though, that's for sure. Dates, peanuts, egg whites, peanut oil, sea salt. Dates, high sugar, inflammatory peanuts, high omega-6 inflammatory egg white, lysosome inflammatory. Peanut oil, high omega-6 can be oxidized. I mean, on paper it doesn't look bad. It's probably not as bad as these other bars here, but I'm assuming they were asking me about uh, the chicken bar or the meat bars or stuff. So here we have chicken, raisins, you know, I don't think these are bad on the go if you had have like a beef version of it. And I honestly, I would probably eat these if I was in a pinch uh, and then get a stomach ache later. So uh, Epic looks pretty good from this perspective. What do they sell? What are these bars? Two ounces for two dollars? That's not bad. Yeah, two ounces for two dollars. It's not crazy. We got oats, oatmeal products over here. I have a video on natural oat fermentation if you guys want to check that out. Bunch of fruit juices. None of these are really going to be natural. I would, you know, juice your own stuff. Uh, we have some teas and some of these herbal teas, uh, especially like traditional medicines. I don't see too many teas I'm familiar with, but uh, some of these do have medicinal values, such as Pau Diarco. Uh, you have olive leaf tea. You have, you know, berberine containing teas that can help balance your gut microbiome to some capacity. Oh man, we got two more hours to go. Uh, with these breads, you know, I would just opt for the fresh stuff. You know, I'd go get some sourdough, something else. I mean, you know, organic spelts. You know, what's in it? You know, you know, there's like 15 ingredients in these breads. So, opt for the stuff they bake over there, I would, if you have it. Uh, more cookies, more chocolate. None of the chocolate, surprisingly, is actually a uh, decent quality from what I've seen, but maybe this Icelandic stuff is good. So this Icelandic chocolate isn't that bad. It's just chocolate, sugar, uh, soy lecithin to emulsify, and vanilla. So out of all the chocolate here, you know, I mean, it might be you know really high sugar, but you know from an ingredient perspective, it's not chocolate as shit. You know they don't have a crazy chocolate selection. If you're looking for a sugar-free chocolate, it's going to be called Baker's chocolate. I would be surprised if they actually had that here. And that stuff is very bitter and doesn't taste good. Uh, we got a bunch of jams here. My dad loves this stuff. I, I buy this stuff from him all the time. Uh, I usually get him like an organic biodynamic uh, brand. This is what I was getting for him. You know, biodynamic blueberry jam. Pretty decent quality stuff. It's still sugar, but it tastes good. Uh, so nut butters. Uh, raw coconut butter is actually a pretty good product. I, I would I would eat this stuff myself. It's really good. You know, it's not high in omega six. You know, compared to something like this raw tahini, very high omega six. Uh, the raw cashew butter, raw almond butter. You know, I would probably opt for the raw butters over the other ones. Raw walnut butter, raw pecan. Oh, now they have a whole line of raw butter. You uh, vegan boys are salivating, uh, getting some raw creamy nut butter in your mouth. So, yeah, I mean. Getting this stuff, having a tablespoon or two here or there isn't going to kill you, but it's not something you consume for a large percentage of your calories. You know, once you start heating the nuts and oxidizing them and salting them, you're better off making a heated nut butter yourself. Cookies, so we did a chocolate chip cookie video a couple weeks back if you guys want to know how to make healthy cookies. Some more chocolate over here. Uh, here's like the chocolate ingredients for cooking. Uh, and they do have the cacao nibs that uh, I usually give to my sister, so. Let's get some of these. Uh, so they have nibs, they have powder, and they have sweet nibs, lightly sweetened. So what we want here is, is this, these regular nibs. Cacao butter. 
These are actually chumps. This is no carbs, actually. It's the butter, it's separated. So cacao nibs have 11 grams of carbs, eight grams of fiber. These are more bitter. The cacao butter is all fat. And I think this actually tastes better and is mild. Uh, I'm gonna get this today. Uh, although, I, although if you want a more traditional chocolate flavor, definitely go for the nibs. Sweetened condensed milk. I mean, if I was like in a survival situation, I'd take a can of this stuff with me. 1,300 calories for this container. This stuff is actually a great travel food. What's in it? Milk and sugar. I mean, it's obviously not quality milk, but if you had like a condensed milk made with high quality ingredients, you know, it'd probably be a decent source of nutrition and survival food. Uh, coconut flakes. You know, coconut in general, I think it's okay. You know, the closer the ingredient is to its natural state, the better it is. Like a raw coconut oil, a raw coconut butter, you know, raw coconut. Uh, so here we have a bunch of different flowers. Uh, they sell quite a variety of them and they don't have uh, heirloom grains. So I wouldn't fixate too much on you know trying to find a good flower from Whole Foods. I would try to look online for like einkorn weed or something. Artificial sweeteners. I don't really touch the artificial sweeteners. Uh, what I do use is raw honey, which is across from us. We'll take a look at that in a second. Uh, but first, I want to take a look at uh, the seasonings. Uh, this is uh, ground vanilla. And vanilla is very expensive, as some of you guys know. But this ground up vanilla is actually pretty affordable. And I really love adding this to ice cream. I mean, yeah, no, 25 bucks for an ounce is crazy. But compared to three vanilla beans for you know 30 bucks, that's even crazier. Uh, if you want to offer something cheaper, you can buy vanilla extract. But I really like this vanilla bean powder. I'm gonna make some ice cream with this later this week. Uh, this is my favorite black pepper. Uh, this is what I buy for my family, organic Italian black pepper. I'm just looking for a salt here. I, I need to pick up some salt because I'm running low. I uh, Usually I do use Redmond's real salt. Uh, I like that Celtic salt too. I uh, Usually I go for like a Celtic sea salt or a Redmond salt. Sometimes I just like trying new stuff. Uh, Fleur de Cell is always a really high quality product. I don't think they have any DOP stuff here like Fleur de Cell de Grand. Uh, so Amazon might be a better option for salt. Uh, this Whole Foods doesn't carry a super high variety of salts. Uh, so that might be why. Uh, we have a few more over here. Uh, more Redmond salt. Malden's decent stuff. We have Himalayan salt. That's okay too. Not really too much of a fan. Uh, but seasoning wise, I don't really season my food with too much stuff. If I do season my food, uh, I like to go for whole spices that I can grind up myself. You know, so I'll get whole cinnamon sticks. You know, I'll get whole black peppercorns. I'll get, you know, the herb in its natural state. Uh, what I will say is if you like cinnamon, there are several different types of cinnamon. So what you want to look for is Ceylon cinnamon which is usually a bit more expensive, and then the cassia cinnamon is, is cheaper and more affordable, but it doesn't taste as good, and uh, it's not as good for you. Uh, you know, sometimes I will use bay leaves, I will use thyme in my stocks and stuff. Uh, raw honey, I don't usually like buying from the supermarket because, you know, it's probably shipped in a heated truck. It's not kept cold. Uh, Manuka honey might actually just be snake oil, I'm led to believe. Uh, I should probably do a video on it. You know, I'm not too sure of the health promoting effects of Manuka honey, but it definitely tastes really good. So, you know, this really expensive Manuka honey does taste good, but you have a bunch of other honeys that taste really good too. Uh, but again, you know, if this stuff was on a hot truck, you know, being shipped for a few weeks at a time, it's probably not actually raw. Uh, really raw honey is probably my favorite brand because there's like a crust of stuff at the top that's really tasty and delicious. Like, I could eat this whole jar if you mix that stuff in. So from a taste perspective, I like the really raw honey because they have, you know, pollen, propolis, and honeycomb, which makes it a really complex honey. You know, you could try a bunch of different honeys, see which one you like the most from a taste perspective. Uh, I do buy my family a lot of maple syrup from time to time. You know, my dad loves it on pancakes and stuff. Whole Foods does sell supplements. Uh, so if you are looking for something or you need something for some type of remedy, uh, you know, they have a pretty extensive selection of things, even like refrigerated probiotics. Uh, so maybe I'll touch on supplements in another video if you guys want, but not today. 
So what did Frankie Boy buy? We got the rice, cauliflower, artichokes, raw cheese, ground beef, mustard. Now we didn't buy a lot of stuff, but this is just what I need now for myself and for my sister. Uh, you know, a lot of the stuff we talked about, and if you were composing a, a whole diet, you would really be purchasing a lot more stuff than I'm getting right now. Oh, well they actually sell royal jelly, propolis, bee pollen extract. I've never actually tried this stuff. I kind of want to try it. Are these the same thing? So this is royal jelly. Oh, this is a, a pill. This is a pill. This is a container of stuff. Fresh royal jelly contains life form. I'm gonna try this stuff. But these are capsules. So these are capsules and this is fresh royal jelly. I'm gonna try this. Bee pollen, uh, not something I would eat, probably. Propolis, maybe mix this into honey. But uh, if you're a vegan, this is where you would go. Uh, this is what I was saying earlier. We have the, you know, the crates of water at the front here. So if you guys do want to get like a case of water, uh, they do offer that 10% case discount. And you don't have to lug, you know, 40 bottles of water from the shelves. That would be ridiculous. The total damage was $166. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, the cheeses are very expensive. And the cheeses added up to probably at least like $50, $60. Uh, we had that probiotic, which was $30. And then we had the vanilla, which was $25. Stop around! Ooh, she's mad. She needs some animal food. She's angry at her food. The sun came out of it, so it's much nicer outside. I'm really happy we didn't get kicked out. Uh, let me know how you guys like this. I'm sorry I know the video quality was out of focus a little bit and it might have been on and off uh, throughout this video, but I had to film this on my phone because there is no way I was going to be able to carry my camera around in that store. Uh, in the future, I'm going to apply for a permit uh, to film there and maybe I'll get someone to film me with a camera and we'll do like a really in-depth a video a series on Whole Foods and, and all the products they have. Uh, they probably wouldn't let me do it though if they knew I was talking shit about half their food. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, providing you guys with high quality nutrient dense animal foods at the most affordable price. We are probably like half the price of Whole Foods. You guys can also check out FrankiesNaturals.com for minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products. We didn't look at that stuff in Whole Foods uh, because I don't use that. I use my own products. 